Okay, time to gas up, so it's a good time to do a little mortality talk. I want to talk about cohort tables, or we could say birth year tables, versus calendar year tables, or also called period tables. So two different types of mortality tables. Every time you hear a report, this is usually annually from the CDC, and sometimes twice a year, sometimes it's you know the preliminary and then the final estimate of deaths from the year, and then they give you, oh, life expectancy went up or went down that year. And they're quoting life expectancy from birth, supposedly. The problem is that's calendar year mortality. So for example, I believe for 2016 and 2017, uh, the life expectancies went down. The thing is that didn't go down for specific people per se. It's just that if we did calendar year mortality to calendar year mortality and calculated life expectancy based on that, uh, that went down. Um, but if you're trying to say, use a mortality table to plan for retirement, calendar year mortality will be misleading to you. You need a cohort table that's based on the year you were born. Let me give you an example um, for basically people who are all dead more or less by now. And that's the 1900, year 1900 cohort table. Uh, so in the year 1900, you see how many people were born. You see how many of those people who are just born died in that year. That's your infant mortality, Q sub zero. So you got that for 1900. Then in 1901, you look at the one-year-olds. Okay, you get your Q sub one. How many of the one-year-olds died in that year out of the one-year-olds? In 1902, you get the two-year-olds and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so if you have a cohort table, that's built of data over that entire time that cohort lived. Now, here's the problem, of course. Uh, you know, you're not dead yet. We don't have the data yet for the future people who died. So how do you get a cohort table? Um, I'll link to the Social Security historical and cohort tables. And uh, you'll see they'll have cohorts for, say, 1970 and 1980. They actually had tables for people not yet born. Uh, so how did they do that? Well, they take some base tables and they apply projection scales to them or various mortality improvement factors. Um, it doesn't, there's different shapes and the projection scales are very um, much dependent on what the base table you used are. So um, this is used in pensions and it's used, well, some pensions, it's used in annuities. Um, we'll have a base table for retirement annuities where you're actually getting income and you will, and I, I mean, I've done this too, and you project it year by year so that you can get some estimates of future mortality. We know that mortality is changing. So um, you want something like that if you were trying to plan for retirement and life expectancy is not good enough, of course, because a lot of people live past life expectancy. Um, you have to base it on your current age and then you need to project future mortality. Um, you know, calendar year mortality tables are useful. They're used in insurance, they're used in pensions because you use that as your base table and you can project those because you have a population you're projecting year by year. But as an individual, in general, you're going to want to use something based on your cohort. So when I do projections for myself, I base it on the 1970 and 1980 cohort tables because they have them every 10 years and I was born in 1974. Um, so I, you know, I can blend, I can just do both of them because I just need an estimate. I don't need an exact number. When you're planning, I, it's a range of contingencies you're planning for. In any case, that's cohort tables versus calendar year tables, but that's not the only distinctions of tables. So I'll, you know, be talking a little bit more about mortality tables uh, again in the future. Bye.